Hello friends, we have been discussing about cells for a long time now. If you remember, we have said that a single cell is like a brick in a building. And just as many bricks make up a wall, many cells come together and form a tissue. So in our today's session, we will be discussing about these groups of cells, their functions and the need to form these groups. Let's get to know this concept of tissues in detail with an everyday life example. As we all know, a college has many departments such as the science, commerce and arts departments. And each department has its own specific subjects. Many students choose to study a particular subject based on their liking. Similarly, a college as a complete institution can be compared to a living organism. Just as many students come together to form a class of biology, in the same way, many different cells come together to form a specific group called as a tissue. Why do they do this? Imagine the class of biology students is given a project to be completed. A group of students will be able to complete the project much faster and better than a single student. This group of students will be able to do so by dividing the project work amongst themselves to finish it faster and using their individual talents to make the project better. Similarly, many cells with a similar function come together to form a group called tissues which will perform that common function efficiently. And just as many subjects come together to form an individual department, in the same way, many tissues with their specific functions come together to form an organ, where the type of tissues that form an organ depends on the functions to be carried out by that organ. Thus, organs can be made up of not just one, but many tissues. The heart, for example, is an organ made up of two different types of tissues. One type of tissue has similar cells which come together to perform a common function, which is the efficient beating of the heart. And the second type of tissue has a different group of cells, which come together to perform the function of forming the valves or the non-beating parts of the heart. And these two tissues together help in the efficient pumping of blood by the heart. And finally, just as all the departments together make up the entire college, in the same way, all the organs come together to form a living organism. Therefore, to sum it up, it is the grouping of cells with identical functions that form tissues which perform the same function efficiently and which in turn come together to form specific organs based on the activities carried out by an organism. So till now we have learnt about tissues, how they are formed and their importance in everyday life. Now let us move forward and look into the different types of tissues. Basically there are two types plant and animal tissues, which we will see in more detail in our next session. But before that, let us understand the reason behind the differences in tissues. The differences in tissues mainly arise due to the differences in the organs that they form. And as we all know, the major differences in the types of organs are very much noticeable in plants and animals. In animals, the organs include the heart, stomach and many others, whereas in plants, they constitute the leaf, the stem and the roots. Due to these differences in plants and animals, their tissues will also differ. Therefore, to sum it up, based on the activities carried out by an organism, the organs will differ and hence the type of tissues. In our upcoming session, we will be studying the individual plant and animal tissues in more detail. So don't forget to tune in to us. 
do share this video with your friends who find biology very difficult and to get more updates subscribe to let's do thank you